Hello, we're here at our Rehoboth Pub today talking about a small batch brew pub exclusive that we're doing with brew pub brewer Ben and our head chef Dennis. The inspiration came from me sitting on my uh, couch after a few too many, what was I drinking that night? Sierra Nevada celebrations. Uh, I was having a beer from Avery, big bottle of beer from Avery, and a couple 90 minutes. So the next day I was chilling on a couch, uh, listening to some Coltrane and reading a, uh, an old uh, cookbook. Uh, and I learned about the way that in Scandinavia they cooked a lot of herrings to pickle them over uh, ash, actually directly on ash. And then I googled that and learned that you know Native Americans here in America were using ash to cook directly on, and now a bunch of chefs at fancy restaurants around the country are using a lot of ash, including a restaurant Noma, which is in Denmark, in Scandinavia, which is often considered the best restaurant in the world. Um, and then I was also in that book, there was something about cooking with buckwheat. And buckwheat's a really interesting grain, uh, very different from barley. It's actually a distant uh, relative of rhubarb. Uh, so we called our pa pals at Anson Mills. We use a lot of their specialty grains. Asked them for some buckwheat. They found an heirloom variety from Italy. All good things come from Italy. Basically, ash gives uh, sort of smoky, earthy, some bitterness uh, to beer. So I said, I emailed Ben and said, hey, I think this would work really well with a, a dry, dark stout. Uh, so I think they'll contribute something really nuanced, similar to the way dark grains uh, contribute to a stuff. And then for the fruit that we wanted to cook the ashes, we wanted to go local. We called our pals at Pfeiffer Orchards, uh, got some honey crisp uh, apples, uh, and I'm, I'm going to let Dennis and Ben uh, talk about uh, what a pain in the ash this beer was. Uh, you know, there's no guide on how to make vegetables or fruit into ash. Uh, so Dennis and I talked it over for a while and did a little bit of research and after not really finding anything uh, we were like, alright, we're going to have to figure this out ourselves. And um, so, But basically we kind of ended up doing uh, what Sam talked about, cooking the apples literally over the ash so we'd get a good fire going, hardwood, charcoal, apple wood, uh, really get that going until it was hot red embers and then add all of the apples on top and just let them cook down overnight and just did that repeatedly uh, until we had enough ash that we were trying to aim for. I think we're going to be adding four pounds of ash to this beer. Uh, when it cooks down, I hope it'll caramelize a little more and we can get some of the sweetness and uh, just goodness of the apple in there. Yeah, you can smell it. Definitely like burnt, smoky. Burn smoky apples, what it's supposed to be. I don't know why. I feel like I'm waiting for a warrant concert to start. It's gonna make it smoky. Look at that. Is it soft? This, this is a style of cooking, really. We're cooking beer, but that's been around for thousands of years, and uh, Native American, Scandinavian chefs would, would cook using this method, and buckwheat goes back like 4,000 years in Japan. So this is the first uh, beer that, other than our 75-minute Cascale, which has the beautiful badge of analog beer, and it is an analog beer because it's unfiltered, naturally carbonated, totally old school, style of cast conditioning, but we're actually naming this one Analog Beer. Uh, analog Beer and Analog Beer for the Digital Age is something I started kind of, I, we did a poster in like 99 or so, and it showed these old school dudes out uh, with these tiny little uh, axes and uh, chainsaws, like kind of harvesting wood their own way. And uh, wood's very important to this company, from our giant wood fermenters uh, to the wood grill over there in the kitchen, uh, woods, and to our mash paddle even. Wood's really central to what we do at Dogfish. And you wouldn't think a surface like wood is something that'd be used by a brewery like Dogfish that really likes to push the outer edges of what beer can be. But we found through um, you know, projects like our Ancient Ale project, or doing a sati, 
or uh, cooking over an open flame uh, of, of hardwoods in our kitchen, or brewing with ash and uh, buckwheat, that you can look backwards for inspiration to do something creative and new just as effectively as you can look forwards and into the future uh, for inspiration and creativity. And that's the whole theory behind analog beer for the digital age. It's a big part of our DNA at Dogfish. So I'm psyched to have a beer called Analog Beer on tap at the pub, I'd say in May, three weeks, yeah, mid-October-ish. Yeah.